The future of the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station is in doubt tonight. It was shut down when one of thousands of cooling pipes sprung a leak on January 31st. At least 1,300 of its cooling tubes are displaying unusual wear. The problem underlines the nagging issues with current nuclear power plants, which operate at tremendous pressures and very high temperatures. We need the energy. Unfortunately, solar and wind power have proven inadequate so far. But there may be a new solution to our energy needs that all sides can embrace. And in this special report tonight, John Coleman shows us what it is. John? Sandra and Alan, our highly technological world, and its solutions don't come from the politicians, but more often from the scientists. So here is a scientific solution that seems to be finding some favor with both the anti-fossil fuel environmentalist and those who want cheap, unlimited power to keep our civilized society rolling onward. In one word, the answer seems to be thorium. Thorium will power the world. That's our new bumper sticker. John Kutch is devoting his life to promoting thorium as the energy source of the future. Man, you could save the world with this stuff. It's unbelievable. Thorium. It can produce about 90 times as much energy as uranium and leaves a fraction of the waste, and that waste cannot be used to make bombs. The reactor is considered walk-away safe. But there's no question about it. Thorium power is another form of nuclear power, so at first glance, that probably sounds scary. Thorium, however, is a far different element than uranium, so when you study it, the scare factor fades away. To start with, thorium will not go into an uncontrolled atomic explosion, no matter what. So the ultimate threat of a uranium fuel plant is immediately eliminated. No chance of that mushroom cloud in Armageddon. Second, thorium nuclear plants will operate at standard air pressure. Now this is a major difference from the uranium reactors that are around today. They're essentially mammoth high-pressure cookers, and it's that huge pressure that leads to the leaks and the risk of that hard-to-control radiation leak. Building a thorium reactor that operates at standard air pressure greatly reduces the cost of building and operating a thorium-powered nuclear plant. And should a leak occur, radiation won't blast into the atmosphere. The plant will simply shut down. Third, thorium nuclear plants don't use power rods with all the problems of how to handle them and remove and transport and store them when they're spent. Instead, the thorium is used in a liquid state, held in a bathtub-like container. A well-built containment tank underneath it is there just in case there is a problem. You simply open the drain and the thorium swirls harmlessly away into the drain tank. Fourth, thorium, unlike uranium, is an abundant element. There are deposits of it in most countries. It's cheap. It's easy to mine and refine. The United States has 14% of the world's supply. It's mostly out there in the desert. Well, I think we have a really difficult time defining you know, what's green and what's, what's not green. But I've decided that for myself, um, the most important, the dominant issue, the thing that could wreck every ecosystem on the planet is climate change. And so therefore, that's what I'm going to focus on. So for me, nuclear power is, is a green power source. Alexis Madrigal has studied the issue and written a book encouraging his green friends to accept thorium. He sees it as a way to replace coal and other fossil fuel power electric generators, and it can be done. Believe it or not, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission built a thorium-powered nuclear plant at Asheville, Tennessee, way back in the 1960s. So far, the, mul the molten salt reactor experiment has operated successfully and has earned a reputation for reliability. I think that someday the world will have commercial power reactors of both the uranium-plutonium and the thorium-uranium fuel cycle types. That scene was in 1968. That reactor, however, was shut down. Why? Political reasons. The military-industrial complex, with its emphasis on nuclear bombs, was totally committed to what is known as the light water reactor. That's what the current plant at San Onofre and all of the rest of the U.S. plants are. But in India and China, they're working to get their first molten salt thorium reactors online. If an earthquake and a 747 and a tidal wave hit it all at once and the chamber tipped over, what would happen? The fluid would flow into this hot cell, down this pool, and into the storage tank. 
John Koch and his alliance of engineers and physicists and, yes, environmentalists, is growing. They will be holding a national meeting again next week. He speculates what it would be like if the thorium reactor had not been shut down back in the 60s by the politicians. Our fossil fuel usage would be diminishing every year. You wouldn't have nuclear waste issues like we're facing today. Fukushima wouldn't have happened. Three Mile Island wouldn't have happened. We would be producing continually less and less carbon dioxide emitted to the atmosphere per year. Oil consumption would be on the decline. Environmental quality would be on the rise. We would be in a very different situation now. The great tragedy is it could have happened, you know, a third of a century ago. Don't want to wait any longer for that future. When and if it finally happens, well, the result will be very cheap if it does. Cheap, plentiful, dependable electric power. But so far, all we have are bumper stickers and a growing army of scientists and geeks and policy wonks who are campaigning to get the politicians to climb aboard. Sandra and Allen? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I'd never heard of thorium before. No, I haven't either. This is a first. I learned something new. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, John.